Welcome back. I told you there was gonna be some changes along the way and I need to rebuild this Z-axis whole part right here because the issue we're having is it's not so important with this bit right here because when it's not level, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But when we use a surfacing bit and we're out of plumb a little bit, you can see that we're digging in a little bit here and it's just a 16th. But a 16th is a big deal when you start doing aluminum billet or when you're making big deep pockets or dados and your piece isn't gonna fit in there right. And that's all because, as I had discussed before, that I can't get side brackets on here to go in here because I've got my 3 8 bolts clamped that are holding this. And this thing, when after I put a little stress on it here and there, uh, made some parts, it's actually, this clamp is starting to split so it's not holding like we need to. I had to put this shim in here to get it to be plumb this way. So I'm just gonna rebuild this whole thing and I'll go ahead and show you the design and we'll go ahead and cut it out and get it done. This is the model that I came up with for the redesign of the Z-axis. You can see that the one piece here is dadoed in on both sides. The holes for the block are pre-drilled and they're exact. Remember last time I had a heck of a time getting those to line up. And we've got the slots here for adjustability. The bolt hole that goes all the way through here with the relief cut in here. That will help it clamp down. Built-in side brackets all in one piece. Made this piece go all the way down uh, just to, above the level of the table and that'll help with the uh, dust collection. So I blew this model apart and put it into this model here and then from here I went ahead and did all the cam work and the setups for the tools and created the g-code for that and Fusion 360 is real nice you can show oh here's my uh, that's how the tool path's going to work, and I like to do a couple passes on these normally. And it also leaves these little tabs wherever you decide to put these tabs so that uh, your piece doesn't come loose and spin out on you and get all messed up from not being clamped down properly. But anyhow, this is what we did, and this is what I'm going to uh, redo. And we'll take it out and cut it on the router. So I made this new Z-axis bracket on the CNC and I had a little design flaw as I offset this 3 8 bolt hole just a little bit too far back. So when it went into the router bracket, that 3 8 bolt was just enough to where I could not get the router to fit in that. So I'm going to make a new one of these, make two new side brackets put that hole just a little bit this way and it should be good to go. This time I'm going to go ahead and we'll uh, watch the CNC cut it out. So as we go to eight times speed, I had to turn the volume down because the router made such a high pitch and kill your ears. Anyhow, this is we're cutting the slots. This took about four and a half minutes to cut both slots and the pilot holes. So I had to speed it up so that uh, we wouldn't be bored to death watching this thing. Same thing on this. Uh, this is cutting the dados out. We're at eight times speed. And then after it cuts the dados, it's going to go ahead and actually cut the piece out. And then the bracket, 8 times speed as well. It started just above the surface. We won't watch it go all the way through. Now that I've got my new Z-axis built, I went ahead and tried to set my tram which is the technical term for trying to make it plumb both ways. One thing I learned is that when you do MDF, 
it makes a lot of dust. So we're going to stop trying to level this whole surface until I get a dust boot built for this thing. I also need to rebuild this bracket, or I'd like to rebuild this bracket that holds the Z-axis. I was finding that my V-groove bearings are hitting the wood a little bit, and I can't get it as tight as I like. Although it's tight and everything adjusts really well, I found online these eccentric bushings that when you put the quarter inch bolt through it on the bearing and you adjust it that makes that tighter this way and adjusts real well so I'm going to put all four of them on there I'm going to rebuild this these right now are 3 8 elongated holes so they're too big and I don't like the elongated holes I'm just afraid that underneath the stress if I hit you know I'm doing some big cutting it might slide that. That's not going to happen with these new bushings. So with that, we're going to take this off. I've got this drawn up in Fusion 360, and we're going to watch it cut out. Right here. New Y brackets on. You ever fight something over and over and over and try to make it work, try to make it work, and then finally you decide, let's take it all apart like I did, and I put the eccentric bushings here and here, only because I can't find the other ones that I ordered, so I only was able to do two. But that made it so easy to adjust this this way. I also put eccentric bushings on the bottom here for the Y bracket running on these rails. It installed so much better, it just so much better, it's just so much easier and I beat myself to death. And I finally redid this and this thing adjusts this way just like I need it. This router bracket allows me to adjust it this way just like I need it. And it's plumb right now. I checked it with the, with the feeler gauge on the bottom. I checked it with the square to the table. But I'm still going to set tram. And I'm going to use this 12 by 12 piece that I drew up in Fusion. I'm going to mount it down. We're going to go ahead and surface this thing and see what our grooves are on the X and then go on the Y. 